Some of us have had to get creative over the past two years for our minds, for our sanity, really. One hobby that has exploded in popularity amidst the pandemic is knitting. According to Forbes, the company We Are Knitters has seen a 75% increase in people ordering products. It's a hobby many of us associate with our grandmothers. But as I found out, Minnesota has a growing group of men who love to knit. And so we were literally turning it inside out, trying to figure out where they had sewn the lock, yeah. you know, sewn the, the, the sleeves in. And then both of us, oh, it's acrylic. It's acrylic. <laughs> they all have their projects. Zach Anderson, I am making the melting marl shawl by Stephen West. Knitting a little simple fisherman hat. And they all have their reasons. For me, it's a creative outlet. Great social outlet. I mean, the, you know, you, you're coming to a like community of people who are all excited about you know, what they're working on and what they're doing. I love all the color that I get to play with and the amount of individuality I can put into my, my projects. And like every project, they all had a starting point. I actually started knitting when I was about six years old. My mother was a knitter and I watched her do it and she showed me how and so that's kind of where I started. I taught myself basically um, when I was trying to quit smoking and it was a way for me to keep my hands busy. Did it work? And it did. I haven't smoked since. <laughs> and uh, 20 years now. It's an art form that can be healthy and healing. When my mom passed away, I inherited all of her stuff. With the use of YouTube, I watched a bunch of videos on how to knit. Jay has since become advanced, creating patterns and selling his work to people around the country. Does it feel like a connection to your mom? It does. I mean, I still have some of her needles. And for many, Fiber arts are associated with mothers and grandmothers. But when I was, you know, seven, eight, ten years old and going to a yarn shop and they, the, the normally thing would be, do you have a list, a note from your mom to pick up what she needs? Bill is advanced too. He's currently creating a freehand sweater without any seams. And then all of a sudden they started taking me a little bit more serious. Yeah, this guy's legit. Yeah, he don't, yeah, he's not just here for pick up women or whatever it was that they thought it was there to do. But he says patterns are changing. The men are all part of a Twin Cities men's knitting club with more than 60 members. It's really nice to find other guys who actually are, you know, excited about yarn and textile creation and the different things you can do with it and color work. And they're good at it. <laughs> well, and, and yeah. While well, the pandemic prompted many to give it a shot. This morning, I made a little cozy. So did a gold-winning Olympian <laughs> who knitted games. between dives. So here it is. We definitely saw an upsurge in the interest in, of men in getting into knitting because of Tom Daly breaking that stigma to think that it's really something that only a woman like would like to do. It's actually very therapeutic. And as it turns out, it's not just about the lines they knit. I like the center one. It's about the circles they create. But it's like you're knitting people together, too. Yeah. Well, you know, you're, you're creating the fiber, but you're also creating the relationships and friendships uh, of, the, of the group. Oh, shoot, I went over, too. So I'll make it three. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. We're all here to help each other, too. <laughs> oh, so much fun hanging out with those guys. Well, if you want in on this, the Men's Knitting Club Twin Cities has a very active Facebook group. You can meet up with them on there, and they regularly do meet up in person at coffee shops, breweries, and yarn shops, of course.